In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add mouse follow to your menu items so that it gives a reactive dynamic look similar to how you see in games like Destiny and No Man's Sky and show you how to make sure that this persists across different menu items even as you click around. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do to make our menu react to our mouse position is come into our menu root script here and we need to add a clamped distance. So we don't want our menu to just follow the mouse in an infinite amount of, of distance. We want it to only go so far and only follow so far. We want it to remain relatively locked to the center of the screen or to its original position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var is gonna menu um, max travel. And we're just gonna set this to be 30. So this is gonna be 30 pixels relative to the screen resolution. And this is gonna be the max distance of units that our menu is allowed to travel to follow the mouse. And so the next thing that we need to do is we're actually going to get a reference to the center of the screen. So kind of when we do this menu origin position, I'm gonna say var center of screen. And we're gonna set this again equal to vector2.0 and just start off. So now in our ready function, we are going to actually set this and get this value. So what we will do is say var rect, and this is just going to be our viewport rectangle. So we'll say get viewport, whoops, get viewport rect. And this is a built-in Godot function. We are already using it down here actually to get our the, the rectangle to viewport, basically your window size. And so I'm actually just gonna change this to be rect that size. So we're gonna get our rect. And we'll say center of screen, which is the variable we set up above as a property. This is going to be the rect's position divided by, or basically half of the rect's size. So we're going to say rect position. So this is probably going to be zero, zero, but we'll just say rect position. And then we're going to add rect size, whoops, rect size over two. So we're basically going to add from whatever position it has, which is, should be zero, zero, we're going to add half the width and half the height, which will get us the center of the screen. So now we have the center of the screen variable, which we can use to anchor our, our uh, menu, where um, anchor our menu to its orig origin, original position, excuse me. So now what we're gonna do is add a process function because we want this to update or change with every frame. So what we're gonna do is basically say, um, var dist to mouse so the distance to the mouse and this is going to be we'll say get global mouse position minus center so what this is going to do is it's going to get our global mouse position and then find the distance from that to the center and then we want to clamp this with uh, our di max distance so we never whatever this distance actually is we want it to be clamped by 30 or whoops not not just 30 but our menu max travel so we'll clamp it by our menu max travel okay and sorry center of screen okay so what we're saying is like we are getting our distance from the center of the screen to our mouse position and we're clamping it with our menu max travel okay so now that we have our distance we need to actually set our rectangles position to be that so what we are going to do is say rect global position and notice this is not rect is in our viewport rectangle this is rectangle is in our menu root so we're adjusting the position of our menu root itself based on where our mouse is at a given time and so we're going to say rect global position and set this to be lerp because we want it to smoothly follow and not just instantly move around we're going to say rect global position so linearly interpolate from wherever it currently is to the distance to the mouse so this is going to be an addition on top of its position and we're going to do delta times two and we you can adjust this um, we're just trying to tie this to how fast our our game is running so if your fps jumps it won't move around more quickly that's why we're tying it to delta so when we do this if i run this now we should see that all of a sudden our menu follows our mouse and it was doing that while the opening animation was running which we will keep for now but if you didn't want that to happen you could just disable this until the animation is finished but so now i'm able to move around and our options follow us 
And this seems kind of nice. Like on the outside, it seems like you want the menu to move with the mouse. But if you look at games like Destiny and No Man's Sky and other games that have this kind of a follow, you'll realize the movement is actually inverted to the mouse. So if I move my mouse this way, it moves to the bottom left and vice versa. And the reason for that is you'll notice it as if my mouse is in a corner, when I move it to the center of the screen to press a button, that button is moving away from the mouse, which is kind of counterintuitive. So it kind of, we don't have that much of a distance, but if you have a, a higher clamp distance, it can actually fight against what the player wants. So what we're gonna do is come back in here and we are actually going to take this entire uh, vector where we're getting the actual distance, basically our, our target position, and we're gonna multiply it by negative one so that we invert it. And now if I run this, you'll see that if I move my mouse over here to the bottom left, the menu moves to the top right and vice versa. And what this means is as I move my mouse closer to the middle, our options become closer to the mouse. It doesn't really do much right now because we uh, don't really have that big of a option space, but you'll see how it's, it's always moving towards the mouse, which is really nice as you move back in. So it's a little bit more ergonomic. This is kind of the formula that you'll see a lot of games, like I mentioned before, No Man's Sky, uh, Destiny, will do this kind of a thing. But now you look at this menu we have. It moves around. It's reactive to the to the mouse and what the player is doing. It's got a nice intro animation. It, it transitions between menus really nicely, and it's easy to use. You can tab around, and it still works whether you're using keyboard or mouse, and your animations are all still there. So, anyway, guys, quick video, but hope it's been helpful to you. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if it has been helpful, like and subscribe to support the channel. As always appreciated. We'd love to have you in the Discord server, which the link to that is in the description. And if you find my work helpful, donating through Buy Me A Coffee helps me continue to make great tutorials. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.